Oh, Y'all man. ever mistakenly mm, 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 mm. ate some bad bread? Mm, mm, mm. You can instantly feel the, the spores mm. stuck in your throat. Like that, that well feeling start to come in instantly. Oh it's my like, God. <sighs> Good y'all, it's the Demon Shirts React, and we're back with another video. Who we got today, see? Today we're back with another American reaction. Yes. We're super excited about this video, guys. If you're new to us and, and we're new, new to you, you, make sure you scroll down, hit the red subscribe button, and turn on the post notification bell. Because we're, we're on, on the road to 50K. And we cannot get there without you guys. Yo. Alright? Join the family. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Hi. Love bread. Bread. So much good bread in France. And although man does not live bread. by bread alone, <laughs> you know that bread. <laughs> not the bread. <laughs> On every corner, there is a bakery that is pumping out delicious, fresh, well-made bread. It's so fresh. This is not easily available to me, and I want to know why. Why is it that the bread that I can get easily looks very, very different? Why is it that the U.S. sucks at making bread? In fact, let me just show you what that looks like. But I don't, I don't think the U.S. sucks. Recently, I just bought some bread off the shelf that I never had before. You know, I ate one with mm -hmm. my peanut butter and jelly, and I really like it, so I'm switching over breads. I'm not going to tell nobody what type of it because I forgot the bread. <laughs> I only ate it once, but I'm going to go back and get it, though. Well, I think the major difference that I know of before even going into this video is that they make their breads at bakery, so you can go into the store and buy fresh bread like right. here we have panera bread mm. but you know that's really all we have huh yeah i mean just about panera bread is fresh bread and then yeah. we have other bread store locations yeah, like but, walmart or kroger or something like yeah that. with hours of plenty of bread but then they have restaurants as well as you was going with mm -hmm. the panera they got subway all these um they got Somebody a lot of make their bread like themselves though like oh I get what you're workers. Coming from. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i guess yeah. coming from like Faithfully battering, yeah, making yeah. it, then oven it, and take it out, and boom. Yeah. I got you, I got you. But yeah, I don't know too many yeah. like that. You neither. I got you. Okay, wait, it's 12 hours earlier. Uh, I'm still back in the U.S. I'm, I'm actually at a grocery store right now. This is how a lot of us Americans get our bread. Yep. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Like it's a they make this plastic look like it's steaming it's just like foggy plastic to be like this was just baked I, right now and it's i like, didn't no, know that that's baked. why it looked like that i guess it's different for him to notice that but like he'll see it too often so he's like yeah they try to claim me with this the reason i'm purchasing this bread is because i want to bring it with me to france just to like have an example lesson and i may use it as a pillow because it's literally as soft as a nova foam pillow some of this bag of bread made with ingredients that are all my yours you just screwed at the people Back to France. Let's do it. There's nothing more American than Wonder Bread. That's where you put the bread? What? The, well, you can't smush the bread. You know how we are. Oh, right. oh man. Talk about the French. I cannot stand my bread being smushed. Dead and eggs. Yes. Careful with those two. Patty. Uh, is it Patty? In case you're wondering, Patty. yes. Any video from Paris yes. must include yes. music like this. Nice, gentle cafe accordion music. There's my composer Tom making it right now. Mm. Cool. It's just so good. Okay, so yeah, we know that France is good at bread and the U.S. sucks at it. Is this just another video where I shit on the USA for being terrible at certain things? Yes, it is. It's <laughs> exactly what it is. But hear me out. I actually have something to say here. I believe that bread is a really important symbol for a bigger cultural phenomenon in the U.S. And that's what I want to talk about today. Where industrialized bread came from, why it exists, and how some people are trying to change it. I'll get to that explanation, but... Well, you see, I think the United States, because, you know, our country was made from a lot of different cultures. True. It wasn't like, you know... It's, a, it's still a new country compared to other countries. Right. So, I feel like the United States came in and, like, 
I want to do everything bigger and better and yeah you know so yeah. so a lot of our things are built on convenience and like he said industrial in, industrialization because like one of the beginning one of the first things you're taught in social studies mm -hmm. is how we went from rural to like you know these big cities these big communities and you know the factories the labor laws that's like one of the first things we're taught in social studies so i just think we're just all about convenience like look at the things that um that came out of the pandemic okay yeah the ordering your groceries mm -hmm. getting your groceries delivered oh yeah, my god that didn't come a big thing until the pandemic popped yes. up. people was doing it but not as like when the pop like pandemic popped up oh yeah Walmart, everything was delivered everything to the store asa bring it to my house i i, I actually look like the service thing. online pickup is <laughs> online is pick oh online, online pickup, pickup is maybe no nobody doubt. wanted to go in the store <laughs> nobody. nobody won't be around nobody germs but for real i just wanted to say that <laughs> i think that though i think that um what happened is with the, with the u.s is like they do come off as they prick from everyone else's ideas and you think and they capitalize capitalize I don't know because you gotta think about it. Um, they came from Europe and you know they migrated, so they mm, took their okay. culture, okay, okay. but okay. they they added on to like you know make the United States its own little. I don't know. They're very business minded like, though, so they probably very did business take minded. a little pieces from here and there and yeah. kind of like did what they could with it. Yeah, very business minded. It's not all coming out how it's <laughs> For me either, it's not. It's like, it's, it's, I'm saying it, but I'm yeah. not completing it right now. I'm trying to complete it, the whole phrase of it. I'm trying to give you the watermelon, not the spice. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we're we're going to get to it as we go throughout the video. Right. First, I'm going to go into that bakery over there and buy myself a large ball of butter right. and flour stuffed with chocolate. Oh, and Tom, mm -hmm. can you throw in a beat to this accordion music, please? Yeah. Thanks. Any questions? Oh. Ooh. 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 Are you Ooh. going to... That That's for the chocolate. Inside. It's like a beignet. Mm. Give it a beignet call, okay? Ooh. Oh, I'm ready to go there just to eat just to eat some pause. Bread. My job Man. is to make videos for you. And the reason I'm able to do that is because there are brands that support this channel. This video in particular is sponsored by BetterHelp. And I'm grateful for that because I deeply support what they're trying to do. BetterHelp is online virtual therapy. I've been going to therapy mm. for several years. It has changed my life. But I'm very aware that it's not easy to find a therapist the traditional way. With BetterHelp, technology helps fix some of this. You fill out a survey and then BetterHelp assesses your needs and it matches you with someone in their massive network of over 20,000 licensed therapists. And then you start communicating with them like in as little as 48 hours. You can do a video call, you can do just a phone call, or you could even just do a live text. If your therapist isn't a good fit, you can easily change for free. And it eventually helps you find the right fit. Therapy is a way to improve your mental health, something that we all need. This is why over 2 million people are on BetterHelp. This isn't a self-help thing, this isn't like a crisis line, it is legitimate real therapy done securely on the internet. If you want to try this out at a discount, you can. There's a link in my description. It's betterhelp.com slash Johnny Harris. Clicking that link helps support this channel, but it also gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp. Therapy has changed my life. It could change yours. Go check out BetterHelp. And thank you, BetterHelp, for supporting this channel and the journalism that I do. Let's dive back into the video. Okay, so why bread? There's a million other things I could talk about that are better in other parts of the world. But it turns out that bread is the most important prepared food that humans have ever made. And bread goes for everything. worth talking about. Yeah. So, wow. let me explain yeah, the, yeah. Minute, the overview of the tens of thousands of years of history of bread and its chemistry and why it's so important. Don't think I can do it in under a minute? Check this out. 12,000 years ago, humans realized that they could plant this grass instead of just foraging for it. This grass was called wheat, and when it was ground up with a stone, it made this powder that, if you put water with it, creates this stretchy, goopy thing that has a bunch of sugar from the flour that's been released. Oh look, all the bacteria in the air love this sugary goop, and they descend to feast on it, burping out gas as they eat. Whoa, the gas can't float up into the air because it's getting trapped in this stretchy ball of goop. 
like a balloon, like a pillow, like magic. Magic. All this feasting and burping is making it rise and turn into a pillowy thing that is way bigger than it was. <laughs> Put this blob next to some fire, and all of the little bubbles that were just created turn hard. Wait, all of this can happen because of this one grass? Yes. Cool, let's plant a lot more of this grass and build all of human civilization off of it, said humans. Society. <laughs> So, that is bread, like the oldest and most important prepared food item that humans have ever invented. Eventually, Jesus. humans got really good at doing this bread, flour, water, yeast thing, and especially here in France, they took it really seriously and have created a whole culture around making bread delicious and amazing. And you can see that they've continued that culture today just I'm by... Sorry, I gotta add this more real quick, like, you got all these bread stores out there, just imagine the amount of bread they throw up. Cause bread is only last mm -hmm. good for like maybe a few days. Yeah. And then once it's bad, it's bad. So they do a lot right. of work prepping and non-stop moving to get these breads yeah. up and good. And but you gotta think about it. Stuff. Bread is the one thing that you can eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It is. So they're making all this bread, but you know it's getting used. And I hope if they aren't using it, I hope that they are feeding. You know. The less fortunate. Yeah, no doubt. Cause bread, it will stick to your bones. It will. Bread and water. Mm -hmm. Bread and water. Bakeries that exist in this city. There are 30,000 independent bakeries in France. Compare that to the 3,000 that are in the United States. And then remember that the U.S. has like a much larger population. And if you do all the math, you see that France has 50 times more bakeries per capita than the United States. 50 times. I mean, that is such a clear indication of how much they value Me good either. bread that is baked a certain way. Our bakeries cater to more like to cakes and pastries and you yeah, know, sweets. sweets. Yeah. Our bakeries don't make bread. Nah, we it's don't just crazy. pop out with a, hey, we got fresh bread for you. Right. Nah, it ain't happening. Like, I'm trying to think of a bakery that makes bread other than Panera, and Panera not even a bakery. And if you had time to Google it, I'm pretty sure you would, but I don't think that's <laughs> no, Nothing off the top of my head that I can think of. No. Hey, so you saying Panera actually makes the bread in the back? Yeah, overnight. Overnight? Yeah. Fresh bread, okay. Okay, so I know in New Orleans, which is another thing that kind of goes with what we um, were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. people move here to create, you know, the United States. Um, in New Orleans, they make this, um, dang, it's on the tip of my tongue. How can I not say this bread? The po' boy bread. What, what is the po' boy bread? Po' boy bread. Po' boy bread? It's a name. Commodus. Po' boy bread? Do y'all know what a po' boy is? <laughs> what, they got a name for po' boy bread? Yes. I can't think of it. Uh, like, I, I don't know. I, what? Dang, I can't think of it. You're going you're gonna to make me put up my It's phone. like a big baguette. I can't a think of it. A big baguette. Did you just name it? Is a it big, a big baguette? That's not the name. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to give you something to I work with. Y'all, it's too early in the morning. I can't think of this name. But, um, yeah, New Orleans, they make this this bread. Mm -hmm. And it, it it's the bread that's for po' boys. Mm. So, they make it. But I still think that's like in the factory. That's not... Yeah, it's in the factory. Yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> you, you didn't come out with what with, with the bread is called, but you did come out with me wanting the uh, po' boy now. You want the po' boy? I do. We should eat that for lunch, huh? Yes, yeah, so I just patty po' boy. Yeah. Mm, that sounds good. <laughs> You're with Mr. Local over here. Yeah. <laughs> Local French food in France. Yes. 94% of Parisians live less than five minutes away from a bakery. Wow. And well, that's that a shows you they care. They yeah. care. It's like you, you you hear stuff like that and you're like, uh huh. Yeah. That, this is their priority. Yeah, yeah. And the culture of, of eating is just as much important here as how like the ingredients are sourced and prepared and whatnot. Yeah. People don't eat while rushing towards their next meeting or whatever. Like it's very much yeah. no. You sit down. You make it a thing. I it's just a part of the way of life here. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. People come into the boulangeries almost on a daily basis, and they check in with each other. It's like, uh, hey, how you doing? You know, I'm doing great. This is what's happening. Why, 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 why? That is the question. Why are these bread cultures so different? And the answer comes down to what America was founded on. I mean, a reminder that America is a country founded by a bunch of people who left their country to go make a new life, to do things differently, to do things more in... Oh, Lord. 
Hold on. Then Sierra just said. <laughs> then I just said, y'all, I am a history buff. Okay. Yeah, big so, facts, man, big facts. But like, he she be ahead really of her time said. with me. Y'all be trying to keep up with the conversation sometimes. I'll be like, yeah. <laughs> And what happened with that time in 1660 what? No, uh -huh. but you know, when we first got together and we'll start talking about things, you mm -hmm. started being interested in the things Man, I would say. You <laughs> weave me with the movies. Oh yeah, the you movies. You got me right. You got me right with the movies. <laughs> Put the movies on. She's like, oh, that's Netflix and chill. I'm about to Netflix and chill, you know. Uh -huh. History, come on. And back in 1654, I'm like, wait a minute. Or it'll be a movie that's based on a true story. You'll be like, wait, that's for real? Yeah, that's real talk. Like, that really went down? You're like, mm, try to tell. <laughs> Yeah, so. Never realistically. Uh, and the way that expressed itself for a really long time was mechanization, industrialization. And to be clear, in the history, in. Britain was as much to blame for all of this mechanizing of bread as America was. That's insulting! But anyway, we're talking about the USA for a little bit. So by the 1920s, you had this machine that was invented an automatic bread slicer. Oh, that's Hello, slicer. convenient, innovation, convenient. America. See, American no private thought about seeing them do it. A tough, no, life. America made it. Oh, America made it. Convenience. Uh, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Oh, so that's where we're at. Bread. This is the greatest thing, says America. And Europe was like, wait, yeah, we like machines too, but like, not for bread. Slice this bread and you make your bread spoil faster. We don't need a machine for sliced bread. But the automatic slicer was just the beginning for America. No, I'm just getting warmed up. Oh, no. Now that we have sliced bread <laughs> that, yes, spoils faster, let's make it, I don't know, not spoil as fast. One way to do this is to take the part of the wheat berry that has oils in it, the husk and the bran, and get rid of it. Focus on the big carb-loaded berry in the middle. Hmm. But there had to be a more industrial solution to make the bread last longer, to be whiter, to be softer. And it's the 1950s, and Europe is like, whoa, dude, America, chill out. Like, bread is just bread. We've been doing this for literally tens of thousands of years. Let's just, like, stick to the program. And America's like, no. So America starts adding all of this stuff to their bread, bleaches and dough conditioners. And suddenly they're putting their bread into controlled chambers so that it'll be hot enough to Tell rise faster. And they're putting preservatives in so that their bread can now sit on a shelf for not just one or two days like it should, but four days, five days, six days, a whole week. And it's still soft. It is still white. It is still spongy and delicious. But it now has 15 ingredients instead of three. And it's cheap and convenient and stable. And America is loving this. And Europe is like, whoa, <laughs> you took this way too far. This is not bread anymore. And indeed, I would argue that this is not bread anymore. It's a exactly bread-like yeah, substance. The different product made from a different process no, and yet we use the same word for it. If you want to know more about what's inside some of this of kind of bread, Tell I me. was actually here making this video when I... Is it, it is a little... Yes, he, a little. he took a little slices out of there. Okay. <laughs> ah, we're watching you, sir. But this reminds me of the chocolate. Like... All for convenience, all so that things don't spoil faster. So they can get more bang for their buck. Yeah. And less work hours for themselves. Obviously. You know what I think that um so in the US they they, they say, you know, especially for bodybuilders are working out that bread isn't something you wanna take like you don't wanna take too much bread in. But then mm -hmm. I hear you have people eating bread by the minute because yeah. we got bread everywhere. So But I guess Is our it a health factor still so that much that's an interesting point. Because they say cut bread out if you yeah. want to, you know, that's for your first, workouts. Yeah, that's the first thing that we cut out when we want to, you know, lose weight here. Is it a carbs? It's to take out bread. Is it sugar? Sugar. I wonder. I so, in your country, mm -hmm. is bread viewed the same as here? Like, in terms of losing weight, is that one of the first things you take out of your diet? Right, right, right. Good question. Because I like to know that. And that's where I was going with that. I want to know. Put that in the comment. Commenters, go ahead. Get the text and get the type and let's hear it. <laughs> a video from one of my favorite YouTubers, Adam Ragusea, that's like a deep dive into all of the ingredients in this kind of industrial bread. Definitely go check it out. Some bread in the U.S. has taken it so far that they will put in additives that keep it spongy and soft or that keep it really white. Even though these additives are known to like cause cancer and inflame asthma and do all of these terrible things, oh many God. of these additives that are legal to be put in American oh, bread are literally illegal in your. Oh, Y'all ever 
mistakenly mm, 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 mm. ate some bad bread, mm, mm, mm. you can instantly feel the, the spores mm. stuck in your throat. Like that, that well feeling starts to come in instantly. Oh it's like, my God. <sighs> <sighs> Ain't fun. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think why the bread turns green Ugh. is because all the chemicals that's in no, it. No, I'm talking about the bread that's bad that you can't even tell it's bad. Oh, no. Oh, oh, You remember man. when I was pregnant? Yeah. And I was like, hold up, that bread muscle was bad because my throat feeling a little bit funny. That's not right. That ain't Jesus. right at all. But the bread you talking about when you can see it. I think it's because the chemicals that's in it. It starts turning green. Yeah. Is that just like bacteria? Bacteria mold. Mold, God. yeah. Oh. Ah, God. And many other countries. Azodicarbone. That's probably where it is right there. Yeah. Is one of them. This is a whitening agent. But you know what? That then this turns product, green. ADA, <laughs> also helps other things stay softer, like yoga mats. ADA is a yoga mat to make them stretch and soft, and it is banned in Ooh. the EU and many other countries. Our obsession with convenience, cheapness, softness, shelf life has led us down a really dangerous path, and yet we're totally okay with it somehow. This is why I think bread is a useful symbol for broader American culture. It shows us how far we are willing to go to prioritize things like cheapness and convenience over tried and true methods of, that have been baked into culture. Of course, industrialized bread exists here as well. It doesn't have some of the carcinogenic ingredients that are not allowed in the EU, but it still has all of the dough conditioners, bleaches, still artificially risen, all of that. The difference is that it is rare. It is much more rare here. What is much more common is the ability to go to your local bakery and get bread that only has a few ingredients. And it's the ingredients that humans have been using for tens of thousands of years to make this staple food. The feeling that I generally have is that this is how it should be. And then when I go elsewhere and you have other kinds of bread that, that last kind of bizarre amounts of time, you know, you're like, this is not really how it should be. You get calibrated to kind of this new standard here. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it kind of ruins you. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out Paris is low key one of the most bikeable cities I've ever been in. But it used to not be like that. Like last time I was here, it was not this bikeable. I you smell some bikeable? urban design <laughs> policy changes afoot here. Someone tried to change this in the U.S. a few years ago. A company called Panera. What could be better we than a visit to yeah. Panera Bread? Tried to bring like European bread culture to the United States. And they did. They had high quality, delicious bread. But what happens next is p potentially the best metaphor for America. Hello. I like money. They got a business loan so they could expand. And then they got investors. Money and they started to expand and scale. And then they were purchased in a massive merger. And now they're planning to go public on the public stock exchanges. Like, they just became a massive corporation who does not focus on making quality artisan bread. Instead, they're now just a machine pumping out bread that kind of looks and feels like European That's bread, but is now done in a uniform, mass-produced, industrialized process. Okay, so... My memory may fail me a little bit, but I was working at Panera during the time of the switch. So I remember our chefs used to, did we call them chefs or bakers? You know, I remember around that time, your yeah. outfit. Well, yeah. my hat? <laughs> no, it wasn't a hat, it was the pants. Oh God, the pants. The khaki pants. Oh Lord. <laughs> um, we'll continue, anyways. <laughs> um, <laughs> what was I going to say? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, <laughs> um, I think our bakers, I think they were called bakers. I don't know. Mm -hmm. They used to come in overnight and they would actually make the bread. Oh, yeah. And yeah. they would like pour it and batter it and all that and put it, you know, in the measuring things to put it in the um, the big oven. Um, Was that like the big bags back there of wheat bread? Like, you know, it was the flour? Oh, it was already battered? They had to add water, water and all that. But, and then like, towards the time I left, I was only there for a short amount of time. But around the time that I left, it ended up being that, you know, it was already frozen. Mm -hmm. And all they had to do was bake it. Mm. So, 
So that may be along mm. the lines of what he's talking about. Basically, making it from scratch. Yeah, at first Every it day. was at first it was made from scratch, and then it started coming from. Um, I guess you know, the, the, factory? the main factory, yeah, I guess. Already made. But Panera, like a lot of people that, you know, a lot of people that we know don't like Panera foods. But Panera is like one of the, it's a fast food restaurant, but. Some clean eating. It's clean yeah, eating, you know. Like, I got a few, um, I got a few uh, stuff on the menu that I like to eat from. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I like it. Yeah. That's all in the name of scale and profit. Wow, they have it. Canned bread. You better so the question not. is, why does this matter? Oh my god, like, babe! Did they got that in real life? <laughs> no. I'm about to say. That reminds me when we first moved to Texas and we um were on the aisle and I said some canned gumbo. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So disgusting. We already knew what type of uh, day was going to be for that day. Because we was ready to go, you know, get something to make for our southern selves. Yeah, we make things from scratch around here. we were seeing the canned gumbo. We was like, nah, something ready for nah, this stuff. Nah, nah, Let's nah. go out of the freezer and see if they got some what, what, little Sausage. package. The package that we would get our sausages and uh -huh. stuff. Yeah, they ain't have it. They had, I'm not going to say the name, but they had some bad sausage. <laughs> <laughs> Traditional bread is better, and therefore everyone should have it, and I hate America. That was snobby. You're a snob. No, I'm not. Kind of, yeah. But also, it actually makes a difference in how it goes into your body. The beauty of bread, mm. always, was that you could put this goop out in the air, and bacteria would come down and start to feast on it, and kind of start the digestion process. That is what natural fermentation does, is it starts to break down the wheat make it ready to go into your body. The way that we make bread in America doesn't really leave time for this. We use heat and chemicals to speed this process up, to make it rise faster, to make it rise bigger in an artificial, synthetic way. And so you're actually getting a much inferior product to what original bread making looks like and what it produces. Yes, it lasts longer. Yes, it tastes like chewy, pillowy, sugary heaven, but it's not bread the way that humans have been eating it for tens of thousands of years convenience scale independence that is what we love in america we love shelf life we love industrialized efficiency and to me yeah all that stuff is super great because it means we get to live these wonderful prosperous convenient lives but i think we lose something really big when we focus on those as the priorities as opposed to quality and community and culture yeah, Last thing I'll say here is that this is breathe. slowly changing. You have a movement in the U.S. of people making some of the best bread in the world using the most traditional methods and ingredients. In these big cities, you have amazing bakeries doing bread that is on par with anything you could get in Europe. And that kind of blows my mind. The problem is, and my critique, is that that is still so rare and specialty and really only available to people who live in big urban areas. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, the rest of us, the most accessible bread to us is this industrial, mass-produced garbage. Uh -huh. in the trash! And that is enough to make me pretty frustrated. <laughs> okay, uh, this, this is my thing. Once he leaves Paris and, and he's not able to get to the bakery, will he go back and get some Wonder Bread? I mean, I'm just saying, like, it's... He can't be that desperate for bread. <laughs> oh, if you put it in the trash, you don't think you're gonna be that desperate. Yeah. He can wait till you get back. Okay. Cause man, you just took that flew out there, took the bread back, made uh, a whole example out of it, and trashed it. Yeah, oh my but gosh. the bread it looked like a couple slices was missing. Either that or he smashed it, swinging it around, just yeah, abusing yeah. the bread, just <laughs> messing up the bread. That's yeah. funny. Now this was a nice video, <sighs> but my question to you is, because he said that you all do have industrialized bread. Do you still prefer the the store brought bread, or do you go to the what they call it? Blue, I'm not even gonna say the bakery. The bakery, yeah. <laughs> to get your bread. Right. So I mean, you can leave it at that. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. So like this video, subscribe, turn on the post notification bell. We have enabled our super thanks, the heart with the dollar sign. Yes. If you would like to support the channel that way, and we have our mailing address in the description box below. We'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.